Welcome to Drawing Wild Washington. I'm your host, Jed Dunkerley, Associate Artist with the Burt Museum at the University of Washington in Seattle. In this program, we're drawing life from the Puget Sound wetlands. This is the ecosystem around the Puget Sound, featuring land that's wet. Uh, these are swamps, lakes, and ponds, rivers, places like that. In this episode, we're going to be drawing a mammal, the beaver, a bird, the great blue heron, and a plant, the cattails. Now, if you have not watched the Drawing Wild Washington intro yet, go back and do that first because it tells a little bit about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it. All right, so let's get started. Beavers are the second largest rodents in the world after the capybara, and they can weigh up to about 55 pounds. Now, I'm going to get started right here in the body with a big oval. Okay, sort of squash down like that. Okay, and the next thing you want to draw is the head, which is a smaller oval about half the size of this big oval, and it's going to be right in line up here with the top of the big oval. Okay, and it's going to have the head here and this sort of hunchy back coming down like that. Um, did you know that the beaver's teeth never stop growing during its entire life? and are made of orange enamel. All right, now you do. Um, the tail is gonna be a long, flat oval, almost the length of the body, and it's gonna come off the back like this, okay? And this is gonna be sort of the ground where the beaver's sitting, so I can go ahead and draw in a line like that. Again, the lighter the lines that you're drawing now, the more they'll be able to hide later when you, uh, when you wanna clean it up. Okay, make the head a little bit smaller. Uh, next thing is the uh, the face. So you're going to have three small circles right in a line, starting in the front of the face. This will be the nose. And then if we just make a line like this, that'll be the eye. And then this will be the ear. The ear is a little bit longer. Okay, so nose, eye, and ear. Now the front of the face will then flatten off from the nose down to the mouth. And the mouth goes in a about as far as the eye. So if you drew a line straight up from the end of the mouth, it would end up with the eye. And if you kept that line going, that would actually line up with what I'm going to draw next, which is the front legs. And the front legs will just be these sort of like circles connected to rectangles. The beaver a lot of times is hunched up grabbing something. So we'll just put the front legs coming out of this little area right here and attach it to the head. The back legs, sometimes I'll draw a big circle to just show where the, the back legs, sort of the muscle groups are. And then the bottom legs are just sort of little ovals that are flat with the, the ground that we've already sort of drawn here. And that's kind of it. You might know that the, uh, we are talking about the beaver's teeth earlier, but one cool thing about the beaver, as I start to draw in some of the, the details here, is that uh, it can close its mouth behind its teeth so it can grab wood with its teeth and swim underwater and its mouth won't fill with water. Because I'm gonna switch over to my darker pencil and start to draw in the details here. Um, you probably know that beavers build dams. They do so for protection against their enemies and the dams are so tremendous that they alter the ecosystem that the beavers live in, and it provides habitat for lots of other animals as well as the beaver. So they're known as keystone species, kind of like humans. They will, their habits will actually alter the world that they live in. Okay, now the beaver was hunted for its, um, its rich fur. So I'm going to draw this fur. If you've ever seen something made out of beaver fur, or if you've ever felt a beaver pelt in a museum or something like that, you know that its fur is very soft and very thick and very luxurious. So when you draw the beaver, definitely go in and give it a lot of fur. And I sometimes I'll go ahead and smudge like that to get a little bit darker. Okay, and one last thing that I'll tell you about the beaver before we can move on is that, uh, it was well known that secretions from a gland in its butt, its anal gland, called its castor sac, 
produced this stuff called castorium, which for years was a sweet flavoring in things like strawberry ice cream, believe it or not. And that there's even a drink in Sweden known as Beverhoit, which translates literally to beaver shout. Okay, so that's the beaver. Um, we're going to move on to the great blue heron. And the great blue heron is Ardeus Herodias. I like that. Ardea Herodias. Name my child that. Um, the Great blue heron is often seen in this pose, which is sort of the what I call the thinking pose. Uh, and we're going to do a big, long oval at about a 45 degree angle. So that's, if this is zero degrees and that's 90 degrees, this is 45 degrees. So you're going to draw a big oval in that direction right there. Okay, and then uh, there you're going to draw an S-shaped neck from the side of the top oval right about here. And you want to allow for this sort of hunchy shoulder right here. So it goes like, like that, and then up, and then over, okay? And then the head's going to be a small oval on the top of that. So when I draw my other curve, I'm going to make sure it doesn't get too wide or too narrow. And I'm going to connect like that. And that's the basic signature of the heron. you got to make sure the neck comes out of the right place so it has this hunchy shoulder. And for years I was drawing it wrong until I really noticed this shoulder thing. You can also think about it as the negative space, which is this area in here. Make sure it's got this little space that comes down. All right. Um, you want to uh, draw the legs straight down from the bottom of the oval with a little bulge for the knees. So this is like a, a little rectangle. And then I draw a little circle for the knee. And then I'm going to bend it just a little bit. And I'll draw the second one back behind it. I'm going to kind of line the knees up like that. Okay, and the legs are super skinny. Um, I'm going to, while I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and draw the tail. The tail, I'm just going to kind of draw like a, a rectangle. And then I'll come back up here and draw the beak. And the beak is a triangle that pops out of the front of the face. It's about as long as the head. So if you measure the head, draw the beak twice again as long. Okay, and the eye is right behind the beak, just above center in the head. Okay, it's important to get that right. Um, there is a lot of cool feather plumage on the great blue heron, which is actually more gray. It's like a bluish gray. So it should be called the gray blue heron. But it's got these, what makes it great are these plumes. And it's got one that comes around off its eye like that. And then it's got one that kind of comes down off its neck like that. And then it's got a bunch of shaggy feathers that come off its back like that. So I'll just draw in some light lines to signify where those are. And then if you want to draw its uh, feet, a lot of times it's a wading bird. So a lot of times it's walking around in the water and you don't see its feet, but they'll perch uh, on sticks and logs and things, and they actually nest in trees. And if you've ever been to the um, the locks over in Ballard in Seattle, there's a huge colony of herons that nest there, and actually starting to build their nests right now in the spring in April, as I am drawing this heron right here. They are building their nests actively. I read about it in the paper. Um, okay, so these are four and a half feet tall. I'm going to go ahead and start drawing in the uh, the details. I'll move it up just a little bit so you can see the feet. It's a tall one. Um, and their wingspans are six to seven feet wide. So if you want to look at some photos of them with their wings open, you could draw one of those poses. You might even need a, a bigger sheet of paper. So I'm going to go in with my darker pencil and draw in the details that I want to keep. Okay. Coming down here, and then there's a little shoulder patch right here that's a little bit darker. It's kind of like a C shape or a crescent shape. I'm going to draw these long feathers coming down and around. Draw the crest on the eye and kind of this dark stripe above the eye. And then the beak. And herons use these beaks like spears. They, like I was saying, they wade around in the water until they see a fish. 
a lot of times they're very patient. You'll just see them sort of staring at the water forever or sitting in this sort of thinking pose. Uh, but when they see a fish, they will jab their necks forward really quickly, stab the fish, flip it up in the air, and swallow it whole. And you can watch it sliding down their throat. It's sort of interesting. Um, and that's about it for the great blue heron. So we're going to move on uh, to the cattails. And I always like to draw these sort of in the backgrounds of my, of my drawings. Uh, Typha latifolia is the cattail. And these are actually members of the grass family. They are always found near water, um, not deeper than two and a half feet of water, though. And uh, because they're grass, they have these long sort of leaves like this, and they're sort of like triangles. So if you want to draw them, I always draw two sets of lines from a point going down. And they always grow in giant groups. And a lot of times you'll see um, red-winged blackbirds hanging out in here. So you draw these leaves, which are kind of long and pointy, and then they have stalks. And the stalks are a little bit longer, and then they have these long ovals on them. And they're not right at the tip, there's a little bit more. You've probably seen these. They're affectionately known as hot dogs on a stick, but they're actually the seed heads. So what happens is you have male and female seed heads. The, I believe the male is above it. So look, when you look at them, you'll see there's another little extension up above the big hot dog on a stick. That's the male flowers. And then these are the female flowers. And then they turn into seeds. And eventually these seeds get fluffy and they float away on the wind. And there's a lot of different parts to this plant that you can't see that indigenous peoples have made as a food source for millennia. So cattails are cool, and I, you always see them in large groups like this. They provide habitat and food. And uh, if you want to draw wetlands, you're probably going to have some cattails in the background. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, don't forget drawing starts with seeing and thinking. So practice seeing the simple shapes that make up these things and thinking about how they come together and there's really nothing you can't draw. So until next time. What's that? You want more? Well, why didn't you say so? We've got coloring book pages available for each one of the ecosystems we've done a program on. And we've got the entire mural available as a silk screened poster for purchase on the website. So check out the links and get yourself some more ecosystem art. Bye.